What's going on everyone? So lining up with a gooseneck ball side to side, not that difficult if you've done it before or you've had practice with it. Now lining up with the ball front to back or making sure that the coupler is directly over the ball when you're backing up to it, that's a bit more difficult. What makes it even more difficult for me is the fact that my toolbox blocks any visibility that my high center mount camera has looking back at the ball. And I can't look back again because it's a crew cab and I have a toolbox back there. So I was in search for the solution to fix that problem, basically giving me the ability to align up the coupler over the ball much easier and much quicker, especially now that I've moved from a traditional pin box to a goose box. So I think you're gonna like my solution, at least I hope you do. So what's going on guys? You are looking at an accessory that I am about to add to my truck and I'm gonna walk you through the process. So what we have here is a camera from a company called Camera Source. Camera-source.com is their website. It's $250 and what it includes is the camera itself plus some watertight connectors for the ends, an extension cable, in my case a five meter long extension cable, as well as a quick connect plug that plugs this directly into the auxiliary camera port that is around the spare tire on my vehicle. Basically what I'm gonna be able to do is mount this camera in such a way that it will give me visibility to when I'm about to hitch a gooseneck trailer to the goose ball. On the navigation screen, you're gonna have the ability when the truck's in reverse to go to multiple camera angles. I have this high center mount camera angle. The problem with this camera angle is that it does not actually pass the toolbox and let me see into the bed so I can see where the goose ball is. But on the screen, I have the ability to use this auxiliary camera function. Now this is usually intended for the Ford OEM camera that you can connect to the back of a trailer to help you see what's going on behind the trailer. I have another solution for that that I'm gonna be installing, but what I really wanna do is use this auxiliary camera connection to better know when I'm lined up with the goose ball. Now I can easily know when I'm straight in the bed, basically when the hitch is lined up side to side and I'm ready to back up to it. But the more difficult part is knowing when the gooseneck coupler is directly above the ball and you're ready to lower it in place. And that's where this camera is gonna come in really handy. So back at the camera. So I plan on mounting this camera right here on the side above the wheel well pointed inwards. And that's simply gonna give me my positioning whenever I'm backing up to a gooseneck connection. So I'll know exactly when it's over the ball. Now, if you're asking why I have a pair of 12 ton jack stands in the back of my truck, these are for another project that's gonna be coming up relatively soon. So you definitely wanna subscribe and follow the channel so you can see what I'm gonna do with these. So first things first, I gotta make sure that everything works. I purchased this camera off of Camera Source, which is online, and they send it to you complete with everything you need. The only thing they didn't provide are a couple zip ties, which I already had. But basically, when you go there, I believe it's 250 bucks, and they already include the Ford OEM plug that gives you the ability to connect it directly to the OEM socket near the spare tire. Now, first thing I wanna do is make sure everything works. So I'm going to take the camera, I'm gonna connect it to this extension cable, plug it in place, tighten up this collar. And on the other side, I'll connect this piece also in place. And this goes to the OEM style plug. So I have my connections in place. And the reason why I didn't connect this plug directly to the camera for testing is, believe it or not, sometimes the cable's the problem. So I wanted to make sure that my adapter, my extension cable, and my camera are all functioning properly. And I'm gonna go ahead and find the plug underneath the truck to attach this to. Now I'm under the back of the truck, and if you wanna know how I'm oriented, the driver's side is on that side, passenger side's on this side. I am on the driver's side near this little stabilizer plate, which you're only gonna have if you have a 450, but you'll see a lot of plugs here attached to the side rail of the rear receiver hitch. But if you reach under the very back of the tire here, you'll feel a plug that has nothing on the other end, and the plug is right here. So about the center point of the tire, right above the back tread of the tire, there's no plug on the other side, and that's the plug we want to connect to. I can't really get the camera up there well enough to see it, but you gotta trust me, it's there. 
So with the spare tire up, I had no idea what was going on up there, why the plug wasn't working. What I found out is that you have this little piece right here, which is essentially a cap. It doesn't connect to anything. And the plug you need plugs into that cap just to keep dust, dirt, and debris out of it when you're not using the camera. So once you unplug it from here, you have full access to it. And if I hadn't have dropped the tire, I would have never seen that. So you probably don't have to do it on your own vehicle. Just keep in mind that you have to remove this side of the factory plug from this cap that they have attached to this wiring harness up here. And then this will plug directly into the camera connection cord that comes with the new camera we're adding. Here is the new plug. You can see it has little wings on the top corners. It aligns to this plug up here. Should just snap right in place. There we go, it's all connected. Now I just need to check the camera to see if it's working from inside. So I've pointed the camera almost directly up, so I should be looking at the sky when I get in the truck to check it out. And I am looking up at the sky. So everything looks to be working perfectly and I just need to install the camera in the bed of the truck now. So the goal here is that I'm gonna see a perfect side view of the camera from the driver's side and I'll know exactly when the goose coupler is right over the ball and when to stop. It should speed up the process significantly, especially if I'm out hitching up by myself. So what I'm going to do is look directly parallel to it and I'm going to mount the camera right here. That way it'll give me a perfect side shot of my alignment to the goose ball. Now I have decided to mount the camera right here under the rail and the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want it to intrude upon any area that might have something set back here. I don't want to have to take this off and remove it. So the camera is going to be tucked right underneath the bed rail here. It's got a little shield above it as well. And it's actually inside of the side piece of my access bed cover. So it's really positioned perfectly right here to capture the goose ball as well as keep it in a place that it's not going to get easily damaged it even has little IR illuminators on it, which will help at night or when it's dark, illuminate that area. So again, if I'm hitching up or dropping off the trailer, I'll be able to see where the goose ball is. Now something I had to do that was a little unexpected is these two little screw-in plastic pieces went right in, but these two didn't. I could not get them to go in without stripping out the head like I did here. So instead, I'm using these as insulators to prevent metal-on-metal -metal connection, and I use stainless steel screws in the center to fasten these in place. So that should work perfectly fine for what we're trying to do, and it's holding on really, really well. This thing's not going anywhere. Now one final hole I have to drill is going to be a big one. It's going to be for the plug coming off of the back of the camera. And it's going to go right underneath this one. So again, not a lot to uh, see here. You're not going to see a lot of holes. And even if you do, I'm going to have rubber grommets blocking everything. So it'll be a really nice clean install. I decided to route the hole above the bracket. That way it was a little bit more concealed and less likely to catch on anything. Now just time to feed the wire. So I've already attached the extension cable, fed it all the way through, and as you can see I placed a rubber grommet right here, which really makes it look clean. Everything looks really good. If I ever run into an issue with these two plastic push pins being weak or something, I'll just replace them with the stainless, but right now they seem to be holding well, and I didn't feel like breaking them to get them out. Time to run the wire around the bottom to the back plug. So the wire is actually coming through and on the other side of this fender dropped behind the dually. So all I have to do is reach up there, grab the wire, and pull it down. From underneath the truck, it's incredibly easy to get to it. This is actually part of the cutout of the wheel well, and here's the wire. So now all I have to do is bundle up the excess slack and run the wire to that plug in the back above the tire. So what I did was I bundled up the excess slack, I tucked it underneath this uh, cross member, ran the wire through here, and I'm going to feed it up and tie it up to the top here. It's already connected to the plug, which is right here. Once you free it from that cap, you get some slack so you can move it around a little bit. 
I'm gonna secure everything and then I will go in to test the camera, see how it works. So everything's been zip tied up real well and I just need to cut off the, the ends of the zip ties and I'm pretty much done with all the wiring. I'm gonna go inside the truck just to test, make sure the camera looks good and then I will secure the camera because I don't know if I flipped it upside down in the process of putting it back in its bracket. We'll take a look at that. That's pretty cool. So that's looking right down on my goose ball. So whenever the trailer goes over, I'll be able to see exactly when it's above the goose ball. That's a pretty easy upgrade and it took a little while mainly because I had to troubleshoot how to get to the plug. That was really it. Everything else took no time at all. The nice thing about dealing with aluminum is that the holes I drilled in the bed aren't ever going to rust and because I used plastic essentially insulators between the screws as well as nothing actually putting metal on metal contact, I don't have to worry about any type of corrosion or damage in that sense. Don't know if you can see it, but it looks really good and it's right there. And it's actually inset slightly underneath the rail, so I shouldn't have any clearance issues ever. Pretty happy with this. There we go. Everything's done. Camera's mounted. I opted not to put the little sunshade on there because when I went back inside to check if it actually caused any problems in the bright sun, it didn't. It actually illuminates the bed better when the sun's in this area anyways. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick install. If you are interested in doing this to your Super Duty, I will put a link in the description of this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I'll talk to you again soon.